All right. Uh, first of all, welcome everyone. Uh, so before getting started, I'd just like to introduce myself. Uh, so I'm Azhar and I'll be the moderator for this webinar. And uh, so talking about me before we move on to our esteemed panelists, uh, that is the guest speakers that we have from Baiju's and Unity with us today. I'd just like to give a short introduction about me. So I uh, I'm working as a program manager at Skillenza and I take care of the hackathons that we organize. Uh, so I just also like to give a small, uh, you know, a demo or a presentation on what Skillenza is all about. So uh, I'll be sharing my screen with all of you and uh, I hope everyone's able to, you know, view my screen. Are you guys able to see my screen? Everyone? Yep, yes, we can. Yes. yes. That's great. All right. Uh, so, like I mentioned, so basically, Skillenza is a platform, you know, where uh, we mainly focus on professionals and organizations. And now, talking about professionals, so we have, uh, you know, a platform where we organize various coding challenges. We have online hackathons like this one as well, that is uh, Unity Hackathon. Similarly, we have various other hackathons where people come. You know they solve our real-time problem statements as well which is given by the organizations apart from that there are some coding challenges which they take part in and then they solve it basically and this helps you know to also upskill their uh, personal experience by taking up the challenges so that is the part when we talk about professionals apart from that if we take a look at the organization so we help the organization to host these challenges and uh, based on this we send out the tests or the challenges that were taken by these professionals to the organizations and they evaluate it and that helps them, you know, get some feedback from them as well. Now talking about the rewards that these professionals uh, get from the platform. So like I mentioned, the organizations, when they host challenges, there are opportunities for jobs, then uh, there are cash prizes. Apart from that, if people are looking or are interested in taking part in internships with the organizations, they can do that as well. And also like every hackathon, one of the main, uh, you know, the cherry on the topping that is, uh, that is the goodies. So we give out goodies as well during our hackathons. And the last one, if you take a look, that is the experience graph. So this is something which helps people, you know, keep a track of all the challenges they're taking part in and this helps them to evaluate themselves and gives them an analytics basically on what are the uh, challenges they've taken up. All right, uh, so that's about our uh, skill enza and I won't take much of your time anymore. Uh, so moving on to today's topic, uh, I'd like to introduce you all. So this topic, uh, this webinar session mainly focuses on what are the tricks and tips for the Unity Hackathon, the ongoing Unity Hackathon and we are very honored to have with us uh, Tanme, who's uh, a game designer at Baijus. Uh, welcome, Tanme, and thank you so much for joining us. Yes, and, uh, thank you, sir. Yes. And we have yes. Narendra Kalfri with us, who's the field engineer at Unity. Uh, hello, Narendra, and more than happy to have you with us for this session today. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Same here. Amazing. Amazing. And uh, also Ranjit, who's the Chief Product Officer, will be joining us shortly. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's just get started with the presentation. And uh, can we have, uh, 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 you know, uh, Narendra present his uh, presentation first? Uh, how about that, Narendra? Is that fine with you? Hello. Uh, yes, Azar. So uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Just need a help. Like, uh, yes. I'll just should I get yes. this thing? Yeah. I'm just giving you an access. Just a minute. Okay, there's some glitch with this tool. Let me just try to fix it. Just a so maybe till then you can just introduce yourself and give a brief. Yeah. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Narendra Chaudhary and I'm field engineer with Unity for India division. And uh, my role basically comes all around like uh, when people are interested in something, doing something innovative, 
uh, with Unity. My role is to guide them how to do it correctly. And in the education section, this is one of the things. Like, yeah, so how, where to start from? What are the things need to be take care of? So for this event, uh, we are doing uh, for the hackathon. Uh, I would suggest like uh, everyone wants to know how to things, what things you need to keep in mind when you are part of an hackathon and like that. So my simple tips will be like, yeah, just make sure like always know that there is a time limit when you are making something, right? Because it's always push you to make something in a very shorter time, right? And pace yourself through the hackathon so that you can keep pushing yourself and get something really out of in a very short term, uh, short period of time. And some other tips will be like, uh, always share your bill with your peers to play and test because the alteration, every time you play on see what you have built and sharing with the people of your team will help you to easily figure out if you're facing some issues in it and you can fix them very quickly. And like make use of tools that you are very comfortable with Unity. So if you're choosing like invoking with Unity, you need to make sure like what things makes you work very faster and which component, which system, which type of styles of code, pattern of uh, game building suits you. Always uh, stick to that when you are in Hackathon. But that doesn't mean like you should not experiment. I will always suggest should experiment with the new tools available. Sometimes it helps. And like split your scenes into, diff you should split your scenes into different uh, like for gameplays and UI so that uh, your different teammates can work parallelly on two different aspects of your project. Even you can also make sure like you have a good working prototype so that people can understand your concept. And always remember to have fun with the jam because that will always help and keep you motivated. So this is something I would say like uh, to start with. Uh, other, I mean, my screen is shared or not? I just want to confirm. Yes, yes, I can see your sc uh, screen easily. Okay, yeah. great, great. So, uh, so this is my screen. Uh, let me switch to my presenter view. Okay. Uh, you can mm. find it in. Great. Okay. So, uh, so today I'm going to cover some of the uh, aspects with Unity game development, which are like most common mistakes we usually we do uh, while developing something. So I don't want to be get like carried away with the points which we are going to discuss. Uh, we want to keep this thing as light as possible, right, guys? Because when you are in a jam on in a hackathon like yeah, event like these, you need to be like super cool and in a fun mood always. So I really don't want to people get uh, suppressed by these stuffs. I just want to like have a quick uh, go through these points and maybe you can search a bit about it to get your mind clear of it. Okay, so uh, so some common mistakes usually. So I have divided this mistakes into some basic categories. So these categories are basically like planning, development, asset settings, programming, uh, CPU performance, GPU performances, UI performances, and some miscellaneous. I have divided these common mistakes which we do uh, while developing games. Let's first discuss about the planning because I think the most important part in any software development is planning, right? So we need to make sure like whatever you are building should be planned in a very precise manner so that uh, you, you don't waste your time uh, doing something else what you have planned, right? So this is one of the most important category you need, we need to like think and clear about it. So what mistakes we do in the planning? Lack of research like check it, check that all planned features actually work on all target platforms or not. Some of the like research we need to do before building something. Unfortunately, there are no ideas which just cannot be 
implemented in Unity. You know, so, so for example, I can say like if you're planning to build some massive multiplayer game, and in that that particular scene, you want to populate hundred objects and like people, or I can say models, which want to raid each other, and you want to run this thing on iPhone four. So this is something comes under the planning. You need to plan a well, like what you are doing will run on which devices best. Minimal support, uh, minimal supported devices are not specified. So you are building something and not specifying like on which platform and by which minimum supports is going to run is one of the another uh, mistakes which we do in the planning. Uh, frame and asset budget, uh, budgets that are not set. So this is some other aspect, like you are using some models and assets and you have not optimized them well to use inside, uh, which is going to make your application heavier and even like hard to render. Scenes and prefab, uh, prefab uh, decomposition for the project is not carefully planned. So, or I can say in other words, like everyone works on the same scene, right? And when it's come to merge your progresses, it comes like oh, people are working on same object at the same time. So we need to make sure like you divide your work, make sure that particular model have a different prefab system on where you team guy one is working on. Other guy have some different prefab set set on which he is working on. Some planning stuff which we can do. Uh, asset pipeline which is not set correctly is maybe another planning lack in planning. So the process of getting uh, assets according to the specification is from the artist. Like we need to figure out first what kind of assets will work for you for, for your application which you are planning to. The project is not started from scratch for after your initial prototype. So this is not something regarding to the hackathon, but it's just a general practice. So, so if you have created some prototype before, and want to actually start developing your main project out of it. So you need to make sure like prototypes are always created, uh, keeping in mind that it should show the result and it should be very fast. But on the course of development, usually if you don't have planned that with properly, it's going to be stuck. So these are some points I've covered and said the planning, which you need to take care of. And the second part category I uh, mentioned uh, in the common mistakes we made are in the development. So wrong practices and mistakes during development actually slow down the team and undermine the quality of the final product which you want to achieve. So we need to make sure like uh, what are the mistakes and how to overcome it. So some uh, mistakes are like in development version control is not set up correctly. So, as I said, like if multiple people are working on the same project, which usually happen in the hackathon events like these, so we need to set proper version control system so that everyone can see the progress and the module which they are working on and can save, pull, and commit the changes as well. Static data are stored in JSON and XML files. So basically getting data out of JSON and XML is kind of a slow loading process. So we need to make sure like all our static data should be directly used in the classes. Parsing generates garbage. So these are some reasons which can slow down your development process. For building static data, use scriptable objects. I think this is one of the best practice you, need, you can do when working with the static objects. Other point I can say, uh, project contain unused assets, plugins, and duplicate libraries at the time of development. So when we are testing stuff, creating something, in, and we are we used to import lots of uh, plugins, assets, and try to test them if they works well or not. But at the end of the day, we forget to remove those. So this is one of the mistakes we usually at the end our project maybe become sometimes heavy and big size, many unused assets being there, which constantly rendering inside the GPU and all. So this is one of the mistakes which happens. Repetitive action required manual work. So it's basically like, for example, you have multiple scenes in your application 
and for each scene for example if some method is like used in your first scene and is also used in you know, another scene so instead of writing multiple methods for each scene we need to make sure like we need to create this script in an automated method so we need to automate all the steps of this building process profiling profiling actually what usually mistakes happen like people usually do the profiling only in the editor not in the targeted device so we need to make sure like people also profile and check this profiler and performance of their application in the devices with their targeting so developers don't know how to use profiling and debugging tools so these are some uh, uh, features components inside unity where you can check so profiler you can go for this tutorial uh, page you can check the performance and uh, optimization techniques to how to study and know more about the profiler how to read it how to study it there are few others as well like frame debugger uh, platform tools like xcode instrument mali graphic debugger there are a lot of uh, platform tools as well available in the market poor knowledge of uh, target platform sometimes also cost us a lot so it runs well on your editor but when you when you build it to your targeted platform which you have planned you find like it's not running well maybe like your draw calls costing you too much so third section uh, the common mistakes which we really made in our asset settings so we need to also make sure like whatever settings what are the assets we are using in our application all are set to the best settings possible according to the need of your application so assets basically are like maybe models textures sounds which are using inside your application because these are the most common assets used uh, which usually take your uh, application uh, main size so this is one of the uh, asset setting we can set first like checking the uh, sprite atlases so usually like we do not set it correctly like uh, we can create bundles of multiple small images if we are using we can also use some third party tools to uh, collaborate all your sprites which are using texture settings are not corrected uh, correctly set up like uh, make sure like always the texture which you are using have the correct compressions on it right different platform have different best compression settings you need to make sure like you set that properly if you are using 3d models you need to make sure like map maps are set correctly or not uh, set up an automated way of to apply these settings for the new texture you can also do some uh, scripting or editor tool and can create some stuff out there which always check when you add some new texture and like automatically set settings for them so there are a lot of tips uh tricks for like setting uh, the texture settings so other category is programming so what mistakes which really uh, we usually do in programming are like uh, practices which we use for our programming maybe sometime not that up to mark which uh, that's why which, which makes our process a bit slow so we need to figure out every time like what what uh, programming pattern works best for you so some factor including in it's like poor understanding of unity frame loops so you need to have a good understanding about the different functions and methods which unity provides so that uh, you can use it very efficiently so if you can you need to understand the difference very well between the uh, predefined methods of unity like awake enable these updates right uh, coroutines coroutine yeah is one of the most powerful stuffs you can use but you need to use it very carefully right so you also need to make sure like when coroutines are updated when they are called are they stopped or not about fix updates there are sometimes we use fix update and we need to make sure like how it's executed script initialization logic sometimes uh, we write multiple scripts and 
at good amount of code, like sometimes in start only. And we really want to shuffle that stuff, like which start should we call first and later. So we usually like mess up with the unity execution order, this which is not considered as the best practice. Frame rate is not taken into account when scripting logic or animation. So for example, uh, use of our time delta, time dot delta time for FPS independent scripts, this sometimes give you a great uh, lag. So coming to the another category, CPU performances. So high CPU uses result into lag, a kind of a very laggy experience with your gameplay and all. And usually if your CPU is high, it's going to suck your battery so fast. So I have shared this uh, link so you can go on the learn page on the tutorial section on the topics you can find this performance and opti optimization under this section uh, you can find the tricks which you can use to make sure to your system should have run on best minimal cpu performance settings one of the mistakes we usually do in the uh, like too many scripts have update method so we need to make sure like uh, if we are not using update function or method uh, we should remove it from the class right so it actually removes your cpu cost all game systems are updated every frame so like definite define how frequently you want to update different system in your game for example like objects are moving maybe you have created some ai and pathfinding logic so you we need to manage that thing frequently instantiated objects are not pulled. So if you are constantly like if you're creating a shooter game or something like that where objects are constantly created and pull it, we, the best practice can be pull them instead of making them destroy after some time because if you taking time as a factor of generation and destroy, there's a great possibility it can gives a great overhead. So best practice would be like just figure out the number of objects you need in a scene to render and then kind of pull it which will save your cpu cost memory is actually allocated to every frame this is one of the another reason can slow down your cpu process even small allocation every frame will sooner or later cause a garbage collector spike so you can use a function gc dot garbage collect which will eventually release your garbage. Uh, send message is one of the methods like um, recommend because it kind of a like performance critical code. So instead of using that, I prefer you can use um, Unity actions. You can define actions and can call them where you want to instead of passing messages. Another category would be uh, GPU performances. So GPU is basically like our graphical performances. So what uh, it, uh, like what I say, what basically it, it comes into role when, uh, for example, you're running something and it's not smooth, your frames are dropping. That means something is wrong with your GPU performances. So what it cost it, gives you low frame rate drains your battery very fast and even like it runs very slow so what mistakes made this thing project has too many draw calls so while performing while developing a game we need to make sure like uh, objects have very uh, confined number of draw calls whenever the uh, camera is rendering uh, Over draw is one of the biggest performance like in our mobile, basically in mobile only because yeah, it's running on GPU, small GPU devices. So don't draw unnecessary transparent images. It's one of the factor you can save. The shaders with the mobile are too complex. So maybe you need to make sure like what shader you are using is it compatible with the targeted device which you are planning to work with? 
so the best practice i would say like don't use any shader standard shaders on mobile so there are mobile shaders as well try to use them if you are using default shaders if not you can try and create your own custom shaders which can support your platform which you are targeting you need to avoid the dynamic lights because if you are using for forward rendering every light add a render pass for every illuminated objects so you can minimize the use of this static batching batching is not used so while building your project uh, you should use static batching which allows you to save resources and draw static geometry another category would be ui performances so, so there are some uh, tricks you can uh, take in your mind when uh, setting up the ui for your application or game so unity ui is a very artist friendly tool but it's rather easy to uh, like i can say set it up incorrectly it will be very consume your cpu and gpu resources so it should be correct in a, a placed and used in a correct manner so different resources like aspect and aspect ratios are not taken into account so you need to make sure like all the textures and resolution and aspect ratio of your uh, application is set well and you need to test it first so that it's fit well with your uh, targeted device or not you need to make sure that thing so test your ui on different devices and check whether or it's fitting for all resolution or not there are like features called anchor inside unity you should use them very wisely which help you to overcome these kind of problems opening a new window is not optimized so like for example when you uh, when a new window or a big chunk of ui is created in your game experience there are some noticeable lag right so make sure like you break your ui into small small sub uh, sub panels so which will help you like not all ui instantiating or appearing at a sudden which will not give you a ui performance lag so like list containing large amount of items for example like dynamically you reuse list item instead of creating all them at once create a nested canvas in the list and you can use even source implemented from uh, scroll list and the link is shared in so the last one like basically some miscellaneous apart that what kind of mistake usually like project relies on your like, unity features which are still in beta if this happens usually because uh, you are working with something which are in the beta version of the application and at the time of development you are stuck at somewhere and you are not getting any appropriate solution for it so this is some kind of problem usually appears so you can experiment with the uh, beta features but i suggest when you are rolling out something you need to make sure you're working on the uh, lts version of uh, of your application bugs are not properly reported so we cannot help if you like we don't know what need help so bad bug reports will never looked at support can recommend at workaround so you need to make sure like what bugs you are reporting are like are properly uh, framed so that it can be understood by the others so these are the some mistakes commonly which happens in the game development i shared i hope this you, know, you will found, find this thing helpful and yeah all the best with your hackathon event thank you thank you so much narendra that was amazing i mean it was very insightful and i'm pretty <laughs> sure it will definitely help all our participants and yes. uh, meanwhile i guess uh, ranjit has joined us as well hi ranjit uh, ah. yeah hi ranjit so, before everyone. we move on uh, to the next session by byjus i just want to let know all the uh, participants in this call that please make a note of all the questions that comes across your mind during the presentation please make a note of it before we end the session there will be a q and a where you can just post your questions in the chat uh, there where you can see a column that says question so you can just raise those questions and we'll be more than happy to clarify it for you guys 
and uh, without further ado i'd like to welcome uh, tanmay and uh, ranji to take over the floor with their presentation uh, please go ahead all right hey so i'm just going to start with a small story a very personal story uh, for based on the hackathon so see roughly 15 years back as you know like a 7 to 8 year old kid in mumbai i just had one thing in mind that is to play cricket i did not care much about you know doing well in school math science etc all of that was great it was okay but i just wanted to play cricket and you know you and i was really bad at math it's cool but when it came down to calculating the run rate needed for every single over down when we were, we were watching a tense match i had it perfectly down to up to 3 decimals you know i could I was, i was reading those bar graphs of score statistics and the line graphs and i was introduced to them years before they were mentioned in school and you know by just by talking to other people just looking at them reading and you know it was just something which i could learn and this guy on we after when i was introduced to digital games as well you know for example if you have played age of empires or company of heroes you are introduced to world war 2 stories you are introduced to mythologies the iron age the stone age and you're playing with it you know how that flow goes by so something which you'd idly learn in a textbook was introduced via games for me and it's not just that right so even if you have played the most um, you know the most cliche games like nfs if you get down to the basic tuning looking at aerodynamics learning what drag force is the fact of your slip streaming etc etc you know games do introduce a lot of things to us and it's absolutely great because we are emotionally immersed in those games like the motivation is there and you know uh, roughly that, that's why we absolutely believe in you know the power of learning the power of learning via games as a medium and that is something which you're looking at uh, at you know in byjuice uh, so yeah that, that's roughly what the hackathon is going to be based on and yeah that's what you're looking at so yeah so just adding my two cents to what tanvi just spoke about <clears throat> we at least out here have been a big we have always felt and we kind of strongly believe that it's not about educating a child uh education will happen naturally as long as the curiosity stays intact within them and we know that as two year olds three year olds you find kids are naturally very curious about things they want to kind of learn new things and they have no sense of you know looking at things it's always about new concepts understanding those mastering those and somehow once they kind of get into the the system itself that joy for learning for understanding various concepts or systems somehow kind of disappears over a span of time so our philosophy has been that love for learning if we can invoke that within a particular child then we're doing a lot of justice for ensuring that the child continues to become a lifelong learner has a system to kind of understand new concepts and knows where it can be applied in real life and builds on top of it and so essentially at any point of time we believe that it's the onus of you know people like us who need to build for the education space for the learning space and there is no better tool than games to kind of do that because game based learning something that you know we are being spoken across the world at this point of time but this always existed right right from the prehistoric times um from the early came into how they kind of taught or uh, you know actually kind of passed on knowledge and information it was through such systems and that's kind of happened through the ages itself and now while you have the schooling system you have multiple mechanisms that have standardized or structured the way that learning is imparted but everybody every one of us are individuals who can learn if we are given the tools to kind of make that happen and as long as it's fun so game based learning big believers of that being the future of learning i believe that um, self directed learning can happen at any point of time if we make them kind of you know curious about a particular concept or naturally make them understand concepts without them being spoken down to or uh, being told off this as an exercise for you to learn something right learning has to happen naturally and there's no better conduit for that than games absolutely yeah. you want to speak over uh um, yeah that's yeah cool. uh, so yeah as i should we move on to uh, um, announcing the topics so or... hello oh we are fine 
Azul, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, please go ahead. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I think that's about it. Like in short. So uh, I guess we can proceed with uh, the topics. Right. You see us? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh yeah. So for for the hackathon, we have listed you know five very interesting, uh, really interesting topics. Uh, that is uh, natural selection. Select systems, uh, experiments gone wrong, past, present, future, and patterns. Now these are just bullet points, um, and you know all of these have their own complexities. But you're free to explore any and all aspects of it, uh, any age group, and yeah, we're not only constrained at looking at games, but even you know simulations or uh, interactive experiences which broadly might not fall into the game category, but you feel that still do justice can still uh, be engaging experiences for a kid, even those are absolutely welcome. Yeah. Was it? Yes. Hello. So yeah, that that's um, I mean that's about it from our side. All right. Perfect. All right. Uh, so now, uh, Narendra, are you online as well? Yes, sir. Yeah, so thanks a lot for uh, the insightful, you know, thoughts that you guys have, uh, uh, Tanme and Ranjit, and all the, you know, basically giving the motivation to these people on why do they go ahead and work on this particular uh, problem statement. So I just had a few questions. So to start off with uh, you, Narendra, uh, you yes. state that uh, the, the first and very important thing while you're taking part in a hackathon or even while you're using unity all right you said that people have to do a lot of research right yes. now that is a very, yes. very key point now from <laughs> your side you've got so many years of experience in this particular uh, domain so do you yes. have any suggestions on where can they find the right resources you know from where they can upskill their knowledge as well yeah, so uh, uh, see, resources are like all over the place, right? What I think uh, you can uh, like my my time. I usually think a lot. Uh, what uh -huh. I was actually planning and thinking, I used to draft it on paper first. So I usually draft it on the paper, share it to my fellow mates, and say, "Hey, I have written this logic. Do you think it will work?" So they used to give me comments and some suggestions out of it. I used to modify it sometimes like three or four times. Then I like when I believe like the thing which I have drafted is like looking cool and pretty much uh, okay now. So then I go into the open space of internet browser. I've used to browse stuff which suits my application. So models. So like with working with Unity, Unity have its own asset store. So usually I found a lot of helping assets on the asset store only. So for example, if I'm making 2D games, uh, my main target would be like some animated stuff if I can get so that I can save my time instead of making it from scratch. I usually pick some models pre-made and start like, uh, developing very insightly. So yeah, uh -huh. this is the process I think like we should, everyone should follow. Like draft it well, uh, break into the small parts and pick one part and proceed it. Then try to link each and every part together. You will get a good product out of it. Definitely, definitely. I totally agree with you on this. That is, you work on a specific thing, then you improvise it with the help of your close ones, right? That's exactly. how you, because you yes. are giving them a broad perspective in that case. That's amazing. That's great to know. And uh, now moving on to uh, you, Tanme and Ranjit. So I just wanted to know, uh, I've come across that Baijus is hiring a lot of community developers, game developers, uh, because that is one of the biggest uh, need in this current uh, situation. So when you guys do it at Baijus, what is that you definitely look at a person? I mean, based on his skill set, what, what are those few skill sets that you would definitely want in that particular developer or designer? Yes. Yeah, so 
I think the fundamentals of <clears throat> game building beyond the core functional skills that everybody brings to the table in each of them to make a game there's a lot of functions that kind of come together from art to animation to even the design part of it and especially in the learning space to be able to kind of make your game design not just engaging but also something that will kind of help a child understand a concept that's challenging in itself right so mm -hmm. functional skills what we look for are people who are very experimental in nature because there are no right answers out here you this is not proven mechanics this is nothing that is already set aside as a playbook and everybody's just replicating a particular design a lot of our ideas are zero to one ideas sort of gameplays that have not been crafted out prior to this so there is a lot of owners in terms of being original a little bit of creative thought has to be there and it's not replication of existing mechanics or crafting out systems that you have seen and just adapting it and you know tacking it out on a on a learning principle uh, but it is very much ground up where you understand the core tenets of the audience because it's a very challenging audience right and we keep having this discussion internally now you talk you're probably developing for the uh, you know building out games for one of the toughest segments right we, we build out all the way from age three all the way up to age 18 some of the most transformative peers and some of the most pull our feedback that we kind of get right the, the kids either love the experience that we craft or it's that they hate it right so right. very unkind audience in that sense uh, but it's a great challenge to have, uh, in the sense that if you manage to kind of get them hooked even the feedback when we do our play tests when we do our prototypes and showcase it to a bunch of kids um, the sort of feedback that we get is fun to kind of watch right because they really enjoy that experience and you can see the magic of that translating into great engagement but also learning outcomes which is probably impacting their lives so a lot of folks that we kind of look at beyond the functional skills are people who kind of care about building for the right audience right and understand and go deep into kind of figuring out what will delight and what will help this specific audience and they are very much experimental in the nature in the sense that they actually prototype test it out with kids we kind of have entire systems where we have user research labs out here which lets you kind of you know quickly put a prototype out in front of a lot of kids get feedback act upon it and kind of work your way towards a delightful experience so people who kind of you know believe in those tenets and you know that philosophy of actually you know working on iterative game building uh, that's that's something that we kind of are looking for Perfect. That's great to know. And uh, I just wanted to ask you guys this question. This is completely out of topic for Unity Hackathon. I mean, you guys have been in this particular domain for so many years of experience. And now that you guys are working with Baijus, how how exciting is it to work at Baijus? I mean, the life, the culture at Baijus. Uh, can you guys just tell your experience? Oh, yeah. I mean, it sort of aligns with something with, with what Ranjit said earlier, right? I mean, so as personally as a game designer, I remember how hard it used to be even to make like a first time user experience or tutorials for for players. And now considering right. that you're making games for children and so, you know, if you're targeting an uh, age audience of like three years old, where kids are just introduced to numbers and alphabets, that itself is so challenging, you know? so. I mean, at least for me, I mean, game jams or like, you know, design sessions or working with artists and main products, it's, it's superbly challenging. And it's, you know, the, uh, like Ranjit said, the, you know, when we, when we put our games in front of kids, it's, uh, it's either they go really well or really bad. And that's, it's honestly really fun and superbly challenging. So that's something, you know, which, which excites me a lot. That's uh, great. I had uh, another perspective to this as an I built tons of games at uh, Zynga and, and, and you know sort of, sort of games that we kind of had out there where they're simple casual games built out for the Facebook platform. So as a game developer, as a game designer and when you're kind of building out experiences, you have multiple challenges. Of course, one challenge is to kind of engage. Another one, if you kind of are talking about putting your product in the hands of millions of users, it's not easy to kind of get that. Uh, no, that traction, right? Sometimes we kind of build out great experiences, uh, but sometimes the distribution and the traction kind of becomes challenging as well. And then there's the other aspect of okay, crafting out experiences which can monetize, can generate revenues and things like that. And sometimes when you're building products, you keep all of those things at the back of the mind. And uh, sometimes it affects the gameplay, that affects the amount of fun and delight that could be in your experiences. We have none of those constraints and it's very, uh, very heartening from the perspective that the only ask that we have is not about distribution or how to kind of put this uh, game in the hands of millions of users because the day that you kind of ship the game 
it's on day one in the hands of millions of users and you're getting a really really great feedback from kids and it's already going to be impacting their lives you don't need to kind of worry about adding pinch and revenue and the optimizations around how to kind of drive buyers and users to kind of monetize them uh, beyond the fact that all, the only thing that you don't need to focus on is to drive engagement and to drive learning outcomes which for the game development team largely is very very you know free because they can then go after experiences that they think are truly delightful so in some sense it kind of opens up a large canvas for people to kind of play around with sure that's great to know all right uh, thank you so much and narendra moving to you one last question i had for you was uh, since you've been associated with unity as well and you guys are coming up with the unite india conference uh, next month that is 14th and 15th mm -hmm. in kochi yes. i just had Yay. this one quick <laughs> question so i just okay. wanted to know according to you how is the future of a unity developer right now in indian ecosystem yeah so uh, to answer this question uh, i just want to make sure kids like unity is just not a game engine right so when i started my career i only know like unity is a game engine and it's used to build only games uh -huh. but like from my past eight year experience i come to know like what are the techs unity are into it's not just relied to the uh, games only so there are many non gaming verticals mm -hmm. engineering architects manufacturing immersive technologies like ar vr xr so right. people are developing and most of like non gaming industry people are also working in it so it's not restricted to a single domain it's like now very wide and out so if you think you have an artistic mind and artistic vision with you you can be an artist with unity if you have a programmatic approach and you like to develop gameplays and all you can go for a programming aspect as well so yeah i think this is a great uh, opportunity uh, as a unity developer in the future and it's rising day by day that's great to know all right now yeah. i won't take much of the time of all of you so moving out uh, to the final stage that is the questions from the from our viewers uh, we have uh, 91 attendees that is over 90 attendees so i just i just uh, request our users or uh, our viewers to place their question in the uh, section that is there on the right hand corner so you guys can go ahead and shoot questions and i'll just uh, raise them across to the team of uh, founders that we have here and any one of you can feel free to answer the questions all right so i just wa i'll yeah, just start sure. first question that is what's the scope of pa uh, patterns does it include programming patterns or mathematical patterns or logical or reasoning patterns or simple talking about pattern matching games so i guess by two team would be able to answer yeah. this maybe yeah. I would like to keep it absolutely open. Um, so something more technical uh, as programming patterns, definitely not. But um, let me put it this way: if uh, if you're going to teach, uh, or if, if a kid's going to be introduced to the world of patterns, like uh, linear or uh, pattern-based behavior, images, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, if by playing the game the kid walks away learning something about patterns, that's that's great, and you know that's it's completely free. Uh, alpha numeric images or honestly even apart from alphabets and numbers that that scope is right out there right yeah uh, just to clarify uh, we're not focusing on um, you know patterns based in programming because that, that that's too technical i guess yeah all right no issues okay uh great thank you so much uh moving on to the next question uh so i guess uh, narendra can take over here uh so narendra i have a question from one of our viewers asking can we utilize any unity store assets for the hackathon uh so i would say yes so um when you go to uh, asset store uh, so you can directly search for the category unity technologies so all the assets uh, by the tag name and the unity technologies are completely free to download so you can download and there are like kind of ready made uh, pre built projects as well maybe you can download it play it and maybe something out of it can be useful maybe a structure 
maybe some assets inside it you can easily pick it out and use it in your own application so yes you can use it thank you so much all right uh, next up we have one more question from pulkit uh, and i feel it's quite interesting one uh, so since uh, narendra you already talked about ar vr mdxr technology so we yes. have a question uh, with respect to the hackathon problem statement his question is can we use ar scenes in the competition that is in the hackathon sorry can i get it back uh, you want to use ar screen he wants no he wants to have ar scenes while he's building the final uh, simulation or the game uh, for the hackathon based on the problem statement so his question is can he use augmented reality scenes in in, in the hackathon yes it's it's uh, it's an am amazing concept we can use uh, like i can give an open uh, uh, i can say uh, vision or like and shoot you some uh, concept which you can work on which gives you an enlight what basically powers the AR tech so for example uh, you have some books right your books have some images in it so using your phone you can create some scene in AR where you can simply scan those images and can replicate some real 3d model over it animate it and play some story on it like just as image people can see that image but nobody understand what this image is going to tell us you can create a story out of it in an augmented reality using ar tech so yeah for sure you can uh, build uh, ar scenes in the hackathon it will be a great stuff to showcase so just to add on to your point so i i've come across many of such scenes so to all our viewers if you guys are on twitter you guys can follow this uh, person. Her name is Helen. Uh, yes. So she is into augmented reality and is a very renowned uh, writer as well. So she has, you know, shared many a time such uh, scenes where they, they, they are trying to educate people using such animated uh, augmented reality scenes as well. So if anyone of you wants to take a look and take into consideration Narendra's uh, point, you guys can definitely follow her on Twitter. All right, uh, now I'll just- hey, uh, uh, Azul, uh, just to add on to the previous AR segment of it, uh, AR is definitely interesting and we'd love to see projects over there. Although we're really looking forward for some, you know, creative solutions uh, using AR and gameplay based around AR. Uh, okay. Rather than just using that as a medium to project and make things more interesting. We're, we're looking at a rich gameplay around augmented reality. Oh, with, with okay. the for game, etc. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so there's one more question. So the question is uh, about the platforms that the product is being built for. So his question is: uh, Do we uh, target only tablets, as mentioned in the problem statement, or can they go ahead and focus on mobile devices as well? Uh, actually, a good question. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, please go ahead. With that, that was probably a slight editing mistake. Yeah, we're also open to mobiles and tablets, uh, consciously knowing that designs for both of these devices are significantly different. But yeah, I would like to open that up, uh, open for both mobiles and tablets. All right. <laughs> That's actually a very good question because we can also, you know, highlight this point to the people, the participants who have taken part. So we'll make sure that it reaches out to everyone that they can build the product focusing on mobile and tablets as well. So anyways, uh, we are actually just a few minutes uh, before it, it's 8 p.m. So I'll just take one last question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just take one last question maybe. Just give me a minute. Okay, uh, there's this one question, which is uh, in the future, is visual scripting powerful enough to replace normal scripting? Uh, definitely is. So uh, what is basically visual scripting? So we want our end user to spend less time on writing tons of lines of codes. 
So what visual scripting will you do? It will give you an open graph where you can just simply connect nodes and make things possible. So it's going, going to save a lot of time of development. So definitely this is going to help in the future. Right. And yes, right. Unity is working on it. So uh, there are scripting uh, visual editors. Uh, Unity is working. So most probably in the next version of uh, Unity 2020, they are uh, they may, may they might add in a beta version for a scripting visual editor okay that's great all right i'm so sorry just one last question because i've noticed that two to three people have asked the same question with the same context so the question is uh, is dots dots more helpful than the normal ones in the unity assets store okay so dot is a new tech which is currently rolled out um, it's basically data oriented tech stack so as most of the kids are aware like unity use mono behavior is a fundamental library which takes all the assets component which are inside the editor so whenever your class uh, you create a script and which has inherited from a mono behavior it use all of its library at the same time whether you are using all features or not it reads and compile all the memory when you build something dot basically focusing on an aspect so for example if you want to interact with only rigid body and collision system you don't need uh, another systems which take a lot of memory like lighting uh, maybe some ai algorithm that going in the background you don't want all those stuff so that can be neglected when you can use this kind of programming uh, pattern which is used inside the dot so yeah, it's a great thing stuff if you are you're very specific with your task what you are doing it will help you it will make it, uh, your work very fast compared right. to mono behavior all right thank you so much uh, thank you uh, so that was the last question but uh, to the other views i'll tell that you guys can still uh, email uh, your queries are to azhar at skillenza.com and I'll make sure that you guys are clear with what you're proceeding towards and I'll make sure that all the queries are answered and also as for the video recording of this uh, specific uh, webinar please make sure that we'll be adding a new column on our platform over the same uh, unity hackathon activity page so you guys can take a look at the recorded video anytime and if at all, like I mentioned, if at all you have any queries, please feel free to just uh, drop in an email at azhar at skillenza.com. That is A-Z-H-A-R at skillenza.com. And also thanks, thanks a lot, Tanmay, uh, Ranjit and Narendra for joining all of us. Any, anyone uh, yeah, from thanks, you Azhar. who has to tell a last few words from your side to all our viewers out there? All right, no, we are absolutely excited to see the games that everyone come out. So, best of luck for all. And yeah, just like go crazy, man. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. It's an open jam. Go and have a fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, yeah. As, as a, a serial jam a few years ago, that's having fun is the number one priority. Making something which you enjoy, which you feel is going to work great is, yeah, that's, that's about it. Exactly. Perfect. Great. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you. Thanks, uh, this is great. Thank you. See you. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye.